Right now, there's a hyper-competitive space race, and unless you're subscribed to this channel, you probably don't know much about it. It's actually a battle that's going on between amateur student rocket builders. These student rocket groups are all vying for the title of being the first student group to reach space. The boundary to space is classically defined as the Kármán line, which is 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface. And to date, there hasn't really been a student group that's reached this altitude. Well, that's not really true. There is one rocket group called UCLA Rocket Propulsion Lab, which actually went to 103 kilometers back in 2019. However, that altitude does have a bit of uncertainty behind it because it lost telemetry for the apoiesis of the flight, which means there is about a 10% probability that the rocket didn't quite cross the Kármán line. So depending on your definition, the race is still on. We're done when I say we're done. It turns out there are about a dozen student rocket groups which are all competing in order to reach space. So who are the major players and what are the vehicles that they're building in order to achieve this milestone? Today we're going to go over seven groups with active plans to get to the common line. These are not in any sort of order as each vehicle design has unique features which separate it from the rest. So be sure to stay tuned to the end in order to understand the full scope of the race to the common line. Up first we have Transcendence, which is a rocket built by Astra, a student group that I'm a part of. We are a relatively new student group, which is focused on building a rocket which can go to the Kármán line. Transcendence is a hybrid rocket which utilizes nitrous oxide as the oxidizer and paraffin wax as the fuel. Together this combination is able to generate a force of 24 kilonewtons and a total impulse of 361 kilonewton seconds. This makes Transcendence a class S motor. Overall, in order to accommodate all this propellant, we need to have a vehicle that's about 6.5 meters tall. In addition, in order to save on weight, We've designed a structure in which we're going to be using carbon fiber for our tanks and aluminum for our bulkheads. The final altitude that we want to reach is 103 kilometers, which should just surpass the UCLA RPL team's record. The timeline for Transcendence is to have a launch sometime in the spring to summer of 2023. So let's see if we can make it. Next up, we fly over to Canada with a rocket called Star Sailor, which is being built by Space Concordia. Star Sailor is a monster of a vehicle. It's going to stand at about 12 meters tall and when it's fully fueled, it'll weigh around 800 kilograms. And in order to get all this mass off the ground, it's gonna need a rocket that has a thrust of 37 kilonewtons. This makes it the biggest rocket engine ever built by a student group. And also, the biggest rocket ever built by a student group. I am better at what? Everything. The total impulse of this vehicle is also bananas at 1,000 kilonewton seconds. That's actually the maximum energy that a rocket can have and still be classified as an amateur rocket, according to the FAA. And it also puts the Star Sailor into a class of its own, being a class T motor. Star Sailor also incorporates a liquid engine, which means that they're using liquid fuel in order to power their rocket. This is pretty unique because this tends to be a harder option for student rocketry, and certainly not the easiest choice to choose for getting to the Kármán line. Star Sailor is targeting an altitude of 135 kilometers, which would certainly blow away all amateur records. In addition, they're also going to be doing that with a crazy payload capacity of 16 kilograms, which could also be extended up to 45 kilograms. To put that in context, Astra's Transcendence vehicle is only able to take about 1 to 2 kilograms, whereas Star Sailor is taking almost 10 times that. Space Concordia is targeting having this vehicle in the air by the summer of this year, so really looking forward to see this behemoth fly. Next up, we fly back to the European community with Stratos 4, which is a rocket that's built by the Delft Aerospace Rocket Engineers, or DARE for short. DARE is one of the original groups that has been targeting getting to the carbon line for quite some time. They've been building rockets for 20 years, and they're really looking forward to finally achieving this illustrious milestone. Stratos 4 is the fourth iteration of their vehicle, which has been targeting space. It stands at a height of 8.3 meters and has a diameter of 28 centimeters. It's not quite as massive as Star Sailor though, with a dry mass of 108 kilograms and a wet mass of 334 kilograms. And the reason why they can do this is because they're building their structure out of carbon fiber and aluminum, kind of similar to Transcendence. Star Sailor is going to be relying mostly on stainless steel and aluminum, so their design ends up being a little bit heavier. Stratos 4 is a Class S hybrid rocket, similar to the Transcendence vehicle. However, its burn is going to be a bit longer. It's only going to be creating about 10 kilonewtons of average thrust, so their burn ends up going over 30 seconds, whereas Transcendence has their burn going over about 15. Stratos 4 is targeting to beat the European altitude record at 32.6 kilometers. However, based on their vehicle design, it's also quite clear that they're also shooting for space. 
They had a launch opportunity last year in October, however they had some technical issues which prevented them from pushing the button. So hopefully they can get back to the launch stand this year in order to have a successful launch. Next up we have Dome Piercer, which is the next ambitious rocket being built by the USC Rocket Propulsion Lab. USC RPL has a rich history of building high performance solid rockets, most notably with their Traveler 4, which was able to travel all the way up to 103 kilometers. This is the rocket that set the record for the student amateur rocketry community. However, USC RPL wants to better their mark and shoot for the overall amateur rocketry record, which is 117 kilometers, set by the Go Fast rocket. Dome Piercer is essentially an upgraded Traveler 4 vehicle, which relied primarily on carbon fiber for its structural components. USC RPL is also playing around with their solid rocket formula in order to enhance performance, and also the way that they wrap the carbon fiber around their tank. However, they have been experiencing some difficulty with this as they have gone through three tests of the solid motor casing and all three have ended up in a failure. But we're confident that the USC RPL will get this right. Overall, Dome Piercer will have a Class R motor with a maximum thrust of 20 kN. And this will carry them all the way up to their desired 117 km target. The timeline for Dome Piercer is kind of a moving target, but I would expect to see them launching sometime in 2023. So stay tuned. Next up, we have a student group called MASA which is designing a rocket called the Tangerine Space Machine. Like Star Sailor from Space Concordia, the Tangerine Space Machine is also a liquid-powered rocket. There are actually a lot of liquid rockets on this list because of a challenge that went out a couple years ago called Base 11. This was a challenge to all student rocket groups to build a liquid rocket which would go to the Carmen line. The Tangerine Space Machine is not quite as extreme as the Star Sailor vehicle, although it does come kind of close. Fully fueled, the Tangerine Space Machine will come in at about 635 kilograms. In order to get that all off the ground, it's going to need 18 kilonewtons of thrust. The Tangerine Space Machine has the longest burn duration on this list at 42 seconds. This means it'll be on the boundary between a Class S and a Class T motor. And if flown, it'll be the second biggest rocket ever flown by a student group behind Space Concordia. And even though Tangerine is in its name, it doesn't look like the rocket will actually be painted the Tangerine color. Which is unfortunate, because that would have been really cool. Come on now, dawg. Come on, man. The target altitude for the Tangerine Space Machine is about 123 kilometers, and it's planned to fly sometime in 2022. Although we haven't heard much from the group recently since the whole coronavirus pandemic, so I have a feeling that could slip. Maybe 2023. Next up, we have a rocket that we've actually never talked about on this channel before, called the Carmen San Diego. It's being built by a university group called the San Diego State University Rocket Project. And you may actually be familiar with that group, as we've talked about it in our video, which we were looking at the highest flying liquid rockets. So it's no surprise that the Carmen San Diego is actually also a liquid rocket. The Carmen San Diego will derive a lot of heritage from the Lady Elizabeth rocket, which launched a few years ago, and was able to break a record for the highest flying liquid rocket that was able to be recovered. SDSU wants to build on this accomplishment and actually get a rocket to the Carmen line. Although not a lot about the design is known at this time, there are some interesting features like these canards which exist about halfway up the vehicle. These are going to be used to help control the vehicle during the difficult flight regimes that you end up when you're going to the Carmen line. One issue that ends up coming up is called roll pitch instability. Essentially what happens is that in order to stabilize a rocket to get to the Carmen line, usually we use a spin stabilization method where we just spin the rocket and that provides a sort of stability for the axis that we're going to be putting the thrust on. So if you've angled your fins in order to generate a spin, that will essentially get faster and faster and faster as you start flying faster and faster and faster through the air. So that means that you'll be spinning really, really fast by the end of your burn. But SDSU looks like they're going to kind of control this by using these canards and maybe control how fast they'll be spinning throughout the throughout the burn. The advantage here is that they won't fall victim to what's called roll pitch instability. And this is when the roll rate is equivalent to your natural pitching frequency. And this can cause a lot of instability in flight. And actually, this killed a previous attempt to get to the Carmen line by the D.A.R.E. group with their Stratos 3 vehicle. The timeline for the Carmen San Diego is not really known at this point, but I suspect they're probably looking for a launch sometime in 2023 to 2024. Finally, we'll leave it off with an ambitious group that hasn't quite started their design phase yet, but they're also targeting the Carmen line. This group is called the Yellow Jacket Space Program, and they come out of Georgia Tech. They have some previous experience building liquid rockets with their YJ-1S liquid motor. They are able to bring this up to a thrust of 3.5 kN using a liquid oxygen and kerosene system. This is interesting because this is basically a professional propulsion system. As you may know, liquid oxygen and kerosene is one of the most common fuel combinations for the orbital class rockets built by SpaceX and other companies like that. 
In order to get to the Carmen line, the Yellow Jacket space program will need to scale this up by about 5 to 10 times. So we're looking forward to seeing that in action. The timeline for this space shot starts now. The design phase for this ambitious project should be starting in the spring of 2022. That's coming up in just the next couple of months. So if you're going to Georgia Tech, maybe check out their page and maybe join the program because things are about to get exciting. So that's a quick summary of what I think is the most interesting space race that's happening today. Did we miss any groups? If so, be sure to leave us a comment. And remember to keep expanding your horizons.